Councilor Kayada? Here. Councilor Berry? Here. Councilor Carson? Here. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor Lynch? Here. Councilor McGinty? Here. Councilor Roberts? Here. And Town Manager McGovern? Here. And Municipal Clerk Fling? Present. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, reports and correspondence. Is there anything that any councillor would like to mention? <laughs> councillor Roberts. Thank you. Uh, just have two or three quick little notes I'd like to mention. Last week I was down at Jordan's Agway and there was a fire alarm that came in. The house on, had hit, been hit by lightning and it was quarter of five. Uh, Mike and Gilly flew out of the building, locked it up. And it's that kind of dedication that we sometimes take for granted, but there's an awful lot of volunteers in this town that do, do literally lock up their shop to get out and, and serve the public and they ought to be commended for that. The uh, new fields that are in at Goldcrest, it's been, I found it a real joy to listen to the kids up there screaming and hollering, having a great time. My wife and I went up, took the dogs, and watched one of the football games last week. I met with, uh, came to the zoning board meeting last week and met with them and watched their deliberations. And again, all of the boards and commissions do such a great job. And uh, I hope that everybody appreciates the time and effort that was put into it by all of them. Thank you. Great, thank you. Anything else? Councillor Fritz. Yeah, I just wanted to um, mention that I spent about a couple of hours at the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day we had on Saturday at the dump. And um, I, <laughs> um, I, I think it was quite a large turnout. And I just have to, I think the lines moved pretty quickly. There was a lot of crisscrossing of traffic. And I want to mention that people were very patient and um, I mean, everybody in town was at the dump on Saturday. Um, and the recycling committee um, did a wonderful job of guiding traffic, handing out flyers on what to do with paint and batteries that don't have to go to hazardous waste collections. Um, and by the way, if you miss getting one of those flyers, you can check or any issue about recycling. Uh, there's an excellent section on the town's website uh, to answer your questions. Um, just if, if you did miss the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day last Saturday, the Regional Waste System is holding Mercury Collection Days. There's been six across the uh, region this summer. And there are two more left. One is in Yarmouth, which might be a little bit of a distance for people to go this Saturday. And then the 22nd of uh, September is a Saturday from 9 to 3. Regional waste will be in uh, Portland on Marginal Way, on the mar at the Marginal Way parking lot. Um, so, I mean, you can take thermometers and fluorescent lamps and uh, non-electronic thermostats, electrical switches and relays, and blood pressure cups. And did I say thermometers? So. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee, which I'm a member, met on August 22nd. It was our first meeting of the budget season. Um, they're on a calendar year as opposed to a fiscal year, um, January to December. Um, it, was an, just a, it was a relatively brief meeting. It was an organizational meeting. Uh, Tom Bartell, who's a counselor from Wyndham, was elected as our chairman. And the budget process gets started in earnest in the beginning of October. Um, I will keep you posted as that goes. As you know, there's a lot of issues. The jail, mental health issue is a big one. Uh, the whole jail issue is a big issue budget, as far as the budget county goes. Um, but I will keep you advised as that process moves along. Thank you, Councilor McGinty. <clears throat> Anything else? I would like to mention a couple things. Um, the Town of Cape Elizabeth Town Report 2000 is out. It is available to the public. There's all sorts of interesting information in it. Uh, so I encourage people who want to learn more about the town uh, to pick up a copy. And secondly, school started August 29th for the students. I think it started a couple days earlier than that for um, teachers and administrators. And I just want to wish them well and have a smooth school year and 
encourage everybody to get back into the routine of, of especially watching out for traffic going in and out of the schools early in the morning and then in the afternoon when, when school is out. If there's nothing else from counselors, then we'll move on to the town manager's report. I think I have four items this evening. Uh, three of them are relatively brief, one not so brief that appears on the agenda. Uh, the first is uh, the town clerk is here this evening. I'd like to congratulate her. Uh, the governor and the secretary of state, the legislature, of forming a committee to look at a centralized voter list for the state of Maine. And there were two municipal officials who were appointed to that committee to represent the clerks and all of the municipal interests. And one of those two clerks was Deborah Lane, and I want to congratulate her on her nomination actually by the Maine Speaker of the House was appointed her to that committee. And uh, I know she'll do a, do a fine job there. She also did an excellent job yesterday uh, she and I and some others attended a wedding of Cheryl Parker to Bob Petrus. Cheryl, for those of you that don't know her, is the director of the museum at Portland Headlight. And she was married yesterday at the Spurring Church. It was a very nice ceremony. Uh, Deborah presided over that, and uh, we're afraid we might lose her to the ministry uh, <laughs> soon. So uh, congratulations to Deborah on a good ceremony, but particularly to Bob and to Cheryl on their wedding yesterday. Uh, third, I, I don't know if there's anyone I should be congratulating on the council, but every year at this time I'd like to thank the Papuda Club for hosting the Donald Webster Golf Tournament. We have an employee golf tournament every year. Uh, the Papuda Club is gracious enough to host about five or six fivesomes, I guess, at no charge. It's, it's extremely generous. A lot of the rescue members go, uh, the f call firefighters, as well as uh, three council members, if my numbers serve me correct, and a few other folks. And, uh, it, was a, it was a good time. Uh, Captains Brent Sinclair and Dan Hannigan, who's a member of the Volunteer Fire Department, coordinated. And uh, Carol and Jim Murray at, allowed us to use their property down at Peebles Cove to host a lobster bake afterward. Uh, so it was, it was a real nice event. And I'd like to thank uh, those who participated and congratulate. Was there anyone here that wants to admit to being on the winning team? I wasn't on the winning team, but I think you might want to define what a good day means to a golfer. <laughs> well, anyway, we have it's lots over. of other things to cover. One that's over. The, the final point I wanted to cover in my report this evening is a lot of times the town undertakes many pro undertakes projects, and seldom we, we have the opportunity to look at the before and after. And we oftentimes get a lot of criticism while a project is going on of why is the town spending the money on this, or why is it, why is it happening? There was a recent project that was done totally with profits from the gift shop at the Portland, at the museum at Portland Headlight, no local tax dollars involved. And Tom Emery worked very closely uh, with the Fort Williams Advisory Commission on that project. Uh, several meetings uh, looking at the plans was also reviewed and approved by the planning board. And I, I, because we're so pleased with, because I think it's important to look at projects both before and after and to have the opportunity to say they weren't paid for by taxpayers. And because Tom did such a great job, I really wanted to have the opportunity for the council to look at a few slides of before and after photos. Um, and Tom Embry, if you don't know, uh, is with Land Use Consultants, which is in the city of Portland still. Yes, it is. I get confused. <laughs> yes, right on Riverside Street. You're still there. Right on Riverside Street. And I thought it might be nice to look at a couple of these slides and have an appreciation for the work that was done adjacent to one of our landmarks. So. That's great. At no expense to taxpayers. And I, I take it some of us at least will be moving. Yeah, it'd be best for the three in the middle to relocate. This is the after. <laughs> 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 Do you want me to turn the lights off, Michael? Down? You want me to turn the lights off?
two batteries laying on. This is a very welcoming entrance to them. Uh, one of our other challenges is to provide a, a safe transition from the battery down to the sidewalk, trying to keep people uh, within the sidewalk and out of the streets. Uh, this is the existing view from the top of the battery looking to our. And this is a new set of steps with especially stone paving and all the landscaping on the side. Uh, this is a view from below looking up the steps that over the road and trail and, and uh, bed of rock outcrops. That is the completed uh, photograph here. We're working very closely with the skipping the subcontract to help through this process. So it's just, I can't tell you what the light was to work in this process. I wish all of our products would have been this smooth. Yeah. And this is the overall concept that we presented showing the linkages to get people out of the road and onto the, uh, what we call the headlight walk. And the challenge was what would draw them in there. One of the early decisions was to move this crosswalk farther toward the lighthouse and, and have people uh, not allow them to get into the street when they get to the bottom of that ramp. As you can see to the right is the new stairway and turn to the right and crosswalk doesn't occur so people are actually able to get the new pathway in sight. Uh, this was the early construction phase of that little pine tree. Uh, which our firm, or our previous firm that I worked with was responsible for planting, it was not the tree that we spec, but which was supposed to be a black pine. This is an Austrian pine that threatened to and prune as soon as uh, the seasons quieted down. This is uh, some of the irrigation places which are able to dodge around that. That's a, uh, a real great point to skip. If you provided that to help himself, uh, be sure that all the new side and landscape came in smoothly without having to run a conservative hose for the project. This is uh, toward the uh, ocean, looking back up at the uh, new headlight walk. That's a construction photo. This is uh, a matter of days afterwards with all the sod in place and the landscaping and stones all set in the walkways all in place. Again, this is the uh, north overlook, which was to the north and to the left of the lighthouse as you look at the plan. This, the lower left, where it says north overlook, was a preliminary floor photo, the one, uh, the larger photo was the existing condition just after the skip started during the uh, clearing, and a matter of days later, this is what it looked like from the bottom. This is during construction from the top looking down. Uh, for you, for those of you who may not remember, there was a dangerous set of granite steps to the left. Uh, skip suggestion rather than rebuild those, we uh, constructed a new walk around them. That's a matter of days afterwards. And we had the south of the look, which is primarily the Nally area that involves the monocular. This is what we uh, photographed last October 2000. This is during construction. And this is completion of the siding uh, and placement of the pavement. And this is a detailed close-up of the binoculars. The idea is to take a focal point around each one of those with a section of the pavement at the base. This is a view from the binoculars looking back at the lighthouse. This is a composite view from Batty Blair looking down and the logging truck is to the right there. This is uh, to show a, a seasonal differentiation. This is uh, on the model of the boat in the landscaping meeting. The idea here was to protect people from walking up over the cliff and then down toward the lighthouse, taking a shortcut. That was a picture that we took last December during the site walk with the Commission and the Planning Board. Phase one was completed August 2001. <laughs> Tom, that looks great. I might just say that I, I went on the site walk that you did before, you know, and learning about what the objectives of the um, the path was to get to move people in certain directions and I was over there after it was done and watched the people on some busy days and it was really working, really very effective. It was interesting during construction because they all walked under and over the uh, barricade lines and through <laughs> the irrigation system that looked like they were having a lot of fun. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you very much for your work on that project. It really looks great. I've been down there in person. I took some friends from out of town there, down there, and it really is wonderful. It's wonderful. And I, I hope all the citizens of the town get a chance to go down and take a look at it, because it's really a, a vast improvement. Okay. Moving on. Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Anybody out there got anything to add? No? Okay. Uh, the minutes of our August 13th meeting. Madam Chair, and I'll move that the minutes of the August uh, 13th meeting be uh, approved as read. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Against? No? It's unanimous. Thank you. The next item of business on our agenda tonight is a public hearing. And this public hearing has to do with the draft of the Greenbelt Plan uh, that was put together with much effort and talent by the Conservation Commission. Um, I have a, a draft of the plan right here. Uh, I believe Mr. McGovern passed out a few pages, or are there a few pages the available? The vision and goal statement of, of the plan. Um, the public hearing is an opportunity for us on the council to get input from the public. Um, I want to thank uh, Dan Chase and the rest of his uh, committee for the, the hard work they did on this, as well as the town planner and numerous other people, too many to thank in person. But um, at the public hearing, I would ask, just in the interest of people keeping things moving along, there are quite a few people here. If you could uh, line up there when it's time to make your remarks, that would help rather than everybody getting up one at a time. That sort of chews up a lot of time. Um, with people coming and going from their seat. And if you could try to keep your marks brief, we want to be able to hear everything that everybody has to say. But if you could try to be brief and try not to be too repetitive, I know everyone wants to say their remarks, but um, it would be helpful. And um, I would also ask that people confine themselves to speaking once, just so we don't get people sort of getting on the tail of the line and looping back through three times. Um, as has been known to happen a, a few times in the past. Uh, it just makes things work more smoothly. So, um, should, I, should I have Mr. Yeah, Chase? Uh, Dan Chase is here. Um, thank you for coming. And I think he can give some brief introductory remarks that would sort of lay out uh, some information about the Greenbelt Plan that would be helpful, and then we can move forward to getting input from members of the public. Mr. Chase? Good evening and good evening to the audience. I do, I wrote down a few remarks. My intent is just to try to tell you some of the process we went through to, or what we attempted to do with this plan. Um, you know, hopefully this will take five or 10 minutes. And just please be patient. Uh, I'll try to get through it as quickly as I can and we'll, because we really want to get to the public comments. First of all, I. Uh, the other members of the commission are here tonight, and I'd just like to recognize them briefly. Uh, we were offering to, if you have any questions that you want answered tonight, then uh, we will answer questions for you. So I just, I'd just like to introduce everybody so you see who they are. Uh, we have uh, Mike Pulsford, was on Broad Cove Road. Uh, Dave Sterling, also a Broad Cove Road. Kevin Cameron, Rocky Hill Road. <laughs> Nancy Irving, Crescent View Avenue. Mike Duddy, also Crescent View Avenue. And uh, John Herrick of Reef Road. Uh, we undertook to come up with a new Greenbelt plan because the last one, well, for several reasons. One of them was that the, the last plan was adopted in 1988, and if for no other reason than the passage of time alone. Excuse me, Dan. Excuse me. Could you turn your... If you're going to speak to the audience, could you just turn that whole podium? We're, we're having a little trouble here. Each time you okay. go like this, oh, sorry. they're going to miss it. The audience at home will miss it. Okay. 
Thank um, you. Thank you. So if for no other reason than, than the passage of time, we felt we should take another look at the plan, but there were a lot of other reasons. Um, in, in, since the last plan was adopted, there have been um, major new pieces of property that have opened up for public access, either um, that the town has purchased or has been donated to the town. Um, the land trust has acquired a lot of pieces of property in that time period. Also, because of new subdivision ordinances, um, the town has gotten access or has actually had property deeded to it as part of subdivisions for, for public access. Also, some people have, have donated public access easements to the town. So, um, all of that new land created new opportunities and new areas where, where public access, where we felt public access should be created. Also, um, new areas of development occurred, uh, creating new neighborhoods, which are not necessarily near any of the existing trails. So as, p as part of our goal, to, is, we felt we should tie the new neighborhoods into the trail system. Also, we wanted to reevaluate what, what's been accomplished and what, what has not been accomplished with the, the Greenbelt plans in the past. Not that they were good plans, but just some, some goals were met and some, some weren't for whatever reason. We also wanted to more directly address issues such as trail maintenance. And another, another reason was that uh, better technology, better surveying and mapping technologies now uh, create the opportunities to do a lot better mapping and a lot better planning just because there's, there's that much more data and it's that much easier to, to map the trails and figure out exactly where they are. So, those were our reasons, and we came up, came up with a plan. Our vision, which has been passed out here tonight, so you can read it for yourself. Our vision was to develop a town-wide trail system linking neighborhoods, the town center, and open spaces through a hub-and-spoke type system emanating from the town center. Each neighborhood should have access to the trail system by having a trail within comfortable walking distance. I'd like to stop here and, and s kind of expand on this a little. It was not our intent to create the Greenbelt system to be a destination that would draw outside users. Our intent is that the primary users of any particular trail would be the people of the neighborhood that, that, that are served by that trail, that people can walk to the trailhead, be no need to drive, and that the people, because it's a neighborhood trail, will have some kind of, uh, will feel some kind of stewardship toward that trail, and will treat it properly. Uh, to continue with the vision statement, we'd like to complete and augment the Fort Williams to Crescent Beach path, which was originally envisioned in the, the original Greenbelt plan, and also, where possible, we'd like to provide handicapped accessibility to the Greenbelt trails. Uh, the, the plan we have developed is, is best illustrated overall by this map, which is, I know, basically impossible to see behind me here, but uh, in, in developing the plan, we've, we've tried to be consistent with, the, with the, the adopted goals of the 1988 Greenbelt Plan and also in the, with the comprehensive plan trying to expand the Greenbelt system to in increase public access to the ocean, to Great Pond, and to the existing walking trails. Now the map should be viewed as being conceptual only. Um, we, at this point, we have not looked at specific trail locations in the field. The map was developed s simply by looking at the map and trying to figure out what seemed to make sense on paper, but the trail locations have not been field verified at this point. Now, uh, we're the first to admit trails are currently being shown crossing certain pieces of private property. The, the trail should be looked at more as an indicator, more as a, to indicate a desire to connect point A to point B, to, to connect 
from one end of the trail and get people to the, to the other end of the trail. The, uh, they're not an intent, and, and there's no desire to put the trail on any specific piece of property per se. Um, you know, there would be a long process to, to field locate a trail. Uh, we, the commission does not advocate and we will not try to locate any trails on private property where the owner is not in favor of having that trail there. And it expressly says in the Greenbelt Plan, no trail will be constructed by the town on privately owned property without the express written permission of the landowner. And that's in the language that would, would be adopted by the council if, if they adopted this plan. So uh, that, that would be part of the plan. Uh, our goals in, in creating the new Greenbelt Plan are primarily as, as outlined on the map. We also would like to do more public outreach to increase the use of the trail system and to uh, develop a better public constituency for the trail system. We also, the commission proposes to continue doing evaluation of the trail system and doing light maintenance within the commission. Heavy maintenance and repairs would, would be done by public works with capital improvements for large boardwalks or bridge projects or whatever, funded through the capital improvements budget. Uh, we still are uh, anxious to provide opportunities for volunteer projects by Boy Scouts, students, um, trail users who want to get involved in the trail work and, and other groups that approach us. We developed five top priorities in the plan. Um, I'll, run, I'll run through them briefly. I'm not sure they'll make a lot of sense without being able to see the, the map and without being able to talk about them in a little more depth. Our top priority is to create a community recreation trail, or, or at least study the idea of a community recreation trail on the town property behind the school buildings, between the school buildings and the transfer station. This was an idea that was raised by the community and was, has been gotten a lot of public support at, at our public hearing the commission held. Um, and we feel this would be a, a great asset to the trail system if it, if it can be done. Other of our priorities are uh, we, have, we have an easement behind St. Bartholomew's Church that we need to, to develop with a boardwalk, but that's going to be fairly expensive. Um, we'd like to uh, get some access to more of the trails around the Robinson property that the Land Trust recently acquired. We'd like to develop a, a trail from the north end of town in the Maxwell Farm area to connect out those neighborhoods down into the town trail system and we'd also want to continue trying to get a good connection around the Great Pond Trail to make that a lot more usable than it is. So in summary, I'd like to say our, our intent, the Commission's intent, was not to develop a master plan to be implemented at all costs and held out as a, as a showcase to attract outdoor enthusiasts. Our, our intent was to develop a general framework from which we could develop a trail system that serves the needs of the town and could be, be implemented in a, in a sensitive way. We look forward to hearing your comments. If you have any questions that you would like answered tonight, we'll try to answer them the best that we can. Uh, you could also contact us after the meeting um, through the town planner and get our email addresses or phone numbers or whatever. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chase, and, and thank you to the other members of the commission who are here with the town is very grateful for your hard work on this project. So. Um, well, with no further ado, I'd like to declare this public hearing open and invite anyone who wants to speak to come to the podium, please, if you could state your name and also your address. That would be helpful. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ogden Williams. I'm a school teacher and a citizen of town. I'd like to thank the council for holding this hearing and also for empowering the uh, conservation, conservation Commission to uh, spend the time and come up with this document. 
I attended a number of their meetings, and I think they really were uh, very thorough and energetic and put a lot of time and effort into this uh, plan. Uh, I think we have a remarkable system of trails here in town. I think it significantly, significantly benefits uh, us as citizens of the town. I think it improves our value, uh, quality of life, sense of community well-being, and even uh, uh, improves uh, real estate values. I urge the uh, council to endorse this plan and to uh, support it in, uh, in ways that will bring uh, specific recommendations into concrete action. Uh, I'd specifically like to uh, urge the council to look at the uh, options for the town-owned Gullcrest land that is behind the school. Uh, I think this land is particularly, particularly significant because it is owned by the town, because of its large size, uh, its location, uh, being very close to town center, close to schools, close to the pool and fitness center where uh, a great number of citizens could use it. I think it's also important because of its natural beauty and also because it, ha as it stands now, it has parking on uh, both ends of it, which uh, opens it up to uh, good use. I think there's a variety of number of uh, variety of specific actions that could be done to really open up this land and encourage uh, all people of Cape Elizabeth to use it for a variety of recreational purposes, including walking, bird watching, uh, jogging, skiing, walking dogs. Uh, and I think many of these steps could be done at, at fairly low cost to the town, uh, given the opportunity of volunteer uh, labor, uh, possibly donated uh, materials, and even the idea that uh, on this property is the town refuse station with a, a mountain of uh, wonderful lumber, which could be uh, really seriously could, if you uh, uh, directed a town employee to, as, as if, you, if you came up with a plan of such and so, if we need this type of lumber for a boardwalk, say, uh, if you directed a town employee who works at the transfer station to keep their eye out for such and so type of lumber, uh, timber, as it's brought in and make a separate pile, uh, honestly, I think you'd come up with uh, free materials for just about any project you wanted to do back in there. Um, I think you're going to find an uh, exponentially increasing awareness of this land now that there are two new sport fields down in there. I was just in there on Saturday, and there were literally hundreds of people uh, at football and soccer games, who I, many of who I think were sort of discovering this l land for the first time and realizing that there was something there. Uh, I uh, simply uh, encourage the town council to uh, accept this Greenbelt plan and to uh, continue the process so these various uh, Greenbelt trail improvements can be further examined and planned and hopefully implemented. Uh, and I'm uh, personally hoping next summer to be in on the Gullcrest land volunteering my time doing some sort of project to make that area uh, more accessible and, uh, and improve the actual preservation of it. Uh, but to uh, improve the use of it for all the uh, citizens of Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Williams. Oops. Mr. Ogden, someone had a question. For the folks at home, uh, could you put your finger on the Gulf Coast property on the map yes. so that the, they could show it on the, where the Gulf Coast property is located on the map? Great big blue. Right. So that the folks at home could see it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Who's next? There are a lot of people out there. If you could state your name and address, please. Thank you, Tim Yeomans, 28 Forest Road. I'll try to be brief. Um, I second all the words of Ogden Williams, and I urge the council to accept the proposed Greenbelt plan and to accept the proposal to develop the master plan for a Goldcrest property. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. Perhaps we should indicate that our next agenda item is to do just that, to Yes. To develop a master plan for that, Gullcrest Farm. So, um, that's an excellent point. Just, just so to have everyone out there um, watching television knows, uh, watching television knows about this too. Um, item 35 tonight is action on the proposed Greenbelt Plan, where we actually vote on the Greenbelt Plan. And item 36 is action on a proposal to develop a master trail plan for the Gullcrest property. Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. 
Good evening. My name is Mary Beth Richardson. I live on Valley Road. Um, I just want to also commend the efforts of the Conservation Commission. I think they've, they've done a great job on this draft plan. Um, I think that generally um, the idea of interconnected trails is a great idea and um, it really would open a lot of uh, Cape Elizabeth's unique areas to, their, to the residents who might not know that they're there. Um, trails um, connect neighborhood and people to green spaces that um, they wouldn't normally have access to. So generally I support the, the plan and I hope the town council uh, allows it to move forward. Um, and, um, specifically I'm interested in the, um, I guess it's identified as trail number seven, which is, um, would run through Maxwell's farm. Um, I live in one of those neighborhoods that abuts Maxwell's farm and um, I can't tell you how often we go there um, throughout the seasons. Um, spring, summer, winter, and fall, we're, we're there. There's trails right now that, they're informal trails that go to the farm from our neighborhood um, that get used very frequently um, year round. And I think having a formal system there would be um, just wonderful for our neighborhood and also to connect our neighborhood to other town owned properties um, that we don't right now have access to. Um, being a cross country skier, I, you know, the more trails the better as far as I'm concerned. Um, so that's about it. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much. Someone else? I don't mean to be a pain, but it'll, it will speed things along for everybody who's waiting if at least a few people line up. Um, I'm Muzzy Barton. I live off Gordon's Lane. Um, I'd also like to reiterate um, everything pretty much that Ogden has, has mentioned, particularly in reference to development of the Gulf Crest property. Um, I'm involved as a volunteer coach for the Cape Nordic Middle School Ski Program, and um, opening a trail system, particularly in that, in that Gulf Crest area, and perhaps at some point down the road in the future, being able to perhaps develop some um, trail system that could be utilized for the teams to practice for skiing and when we get great snow like we've had in this most recent winter. Um, that would be a great, um, great asset to our, to our teams. Um, in that light, I think it's very important for the council to um, keep in mind the importance, I think, of linking the Gulf Crest trail system with the town center and particularly the school community um, so that uh, students and athletes could have access to that area um, without necessarily getting in a bus or getting in a vehicle. Um, again, I want to thank the Commission for all the fine work they've done, and um, I look forward to this project moving forward very quickly. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Cornelia Morin. I live on Sweetser Road, and our property is abutted on two sides by the Gull Crest. Um, we've enjoyed the informal trail network um, on the existing the now Gold Crest property as well as Great Pond for years. Um, so I'm all in support of formalizing a trail network, you know, in those locations as well as through the rest of the town. Um, one thing that we would like to see addressed is um, perhaps unanticipated uses of the trail system. And there's always, already been a reference to informal trails which um, I think many of us may be aware of throughout Cape. And as informal trails potentially get linked into a formal trail network, um, there's, from our own personal experience, the potential for a few people spoiling it for the rest. Um, we've been at our location for 14 years, and 12 of those years we've had no problems. We've had skiers, snowmobilers, neighborhood kids, um, we've encouraged to cross our property and use the um, informal trail network. And in the last two years, we've had um, just a handful of high school kids using three-wheel and four-wheel ATVs. And uh, we've been lucky in that we haven't had particularly wet years, um, but the potential for damage is very high in our nice, boggy wetlands um, throughout the town as well as just um, our own personal preference of not having that type of noise and use um, either directly abutting or very close to the property. So um, I 
all in support of what the Conservation Commission has done here, but um, as well as the positives to the trail system, I think so, a lot of thought needs to be put into the potential misuse and control of, you know, those handful of people that can really, you know, take something good and turn it around and make a lot of the private owners less than happy about having the system. But otherwise, you know, we're thrilled to have, you know, this going in behind us and around us. Thank you very much. <laughs> she needs to have a chair. Hi, my name is Rory Curtin, and I look forward to the new loop that Mr. Williams just talked about because I enjoy running and skiing. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> My name is Judy Klein. I live at 10 Bridal Path. Could, could you just lift up the yes. mic? Thank you. <laughs> I live at 10 Bridal Path, and I'm here to support the development of the Gullcrest Trail, trail or trail system back in there. I have a son who's a sophomore in high school who's done all of his schooling in Cape Elizabeth. He's a runner and a skier. And anything we can do to make um, more trails available locally so that we don't have to bus our kids all the time, I'm very much in favor of it. Thank you very much. Someone else? Uh, my name is Tim Robinson. I live on uh, 1134 Shore Road, and I'm a uh, owner, along with the rest of my family, of some private property that's involved in the uh, trail system. And I was going to follow the young woman who spoke, but I thought she was a tough act to follow. <laughs> so I waited briefly to make a few comments. One thing I want to say is I appreciate and respect the attitude of Mr. Chase and others and the respect they've shown for private property owners who are involved in this. Our property in particular is, uh, I think, one of the ones that he mentioned, maybe the, maybe the fourth, where it is located next to Robinson Woods, the property that my brother uh, sold at a bargain to, uh, to, the, uh, to the land trust. Uh, our position now is that we now, as, as some of you know, may use the property. We, we don't uh, object to uh, access to the property. We do ask people to go on a certain trail rather than, than go uh, anywhere they might wish to do. We have no intention of developing the uh, property. Our intent is to maintain it as open space and to be conservationists ourselves uh, and respect the, uh, the rights of wildlife and, and others as well as uh, of the human beings who, who cross there. I think one comment that was made, that is uh, the Green Belt, that it was intended for neighbors uh, rather than for people who live in other communities. I don't think that'll work because where our experience has been that people come from a variety of communities, South Portland and beyond, who, uh, who come there. We even have license plates uh, from New York and Massachusetts, uh, God forbid, and uh, other, other places. <laughs> Uh, so I think it will attract, certainly, if it's advertised enough for people. Uh, I think that the conservation interest in the property will be maintained if, if it... Uh, the question is, how many people would it take to kind of spoil the uh, uh, property for... In turn, I'm not saying this very well. But at a certain point, and this happens with natural parks as, as national parks as well as anything else, once you get a crowd is big enough, then the wildlife have no room, the plants get trampled, uh, the, the pond gets uh, uh, cluttered with stuff, and so on. So hopefully uh, it'll be a limited number, though certainly we uh, do uh, expect and uh, even enjoy uh, access by, uh, by people who come and walk on the, on the trails. Uh, the other owners of the property, it is owned by the Robinson Family LLC. The other owners are my wife and my four sons. One of them lives in London, one in Dallas, two in New York City. And they say, let's not give away family assets right now. They're starting out in life. And that's probably what our position will be. Though we do welcome, uh, we do intend to keep it open. 
and we do welcome a certainly a limited number of people from the town <laughs> and elsewhere who might wish to, uh, to pass through there on there to enjoy it for itself or wherever they're headed for the town center or anywhere else. Thank you very much, Mr. Robinson. My name is Peter Mullen. I live at 44 Two Lights Road. Uh, on June 12th of 2000, uh, I spoke at length before the town council and expressed my desire that the proposed Greenbelt path linking the Broad Cove neighborhood with the existing pedestrian easement on our property not be made, as it will create a complete loss of privacy for my family on the one side of our property that we felt would be protected. On page two of the 2001 Greenbelt Plan, it is acknowledged that there is a change in policy from one of creation of conservation space to one of increasing public access through linkages of trails. This is not a policy shift we could have anticipated nine years ago when we positioned our home on our lot, and I cannot now move our home to buffer my family from this recent policy shift. Now seeing that this proposed linkage as a second priority for the 2001 Greenbelt Plan, after expressing my concerns at the council meeting of June 2000, leaves me, leaves me doubtful of the Con Conservation Commission's stated policy of attempting to minimize the impact of these paths on homeowners, and also leaves me wondering why the rights of the general public to perform the strictly leisurely, leisurely act of walking through the woods should supersede my fundamental rights as a homeowner to the peaceful enjoyment of my home. I again request that this proposed path linkage not be constructed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Excuse me. Um, may I ask Mr. Mullen a question? Um, yes. I'd, I'd just like you to point out, if you could, where um, you are. Uh, number 23 on Two Lights Road. Okay. Maker Heights subdivision. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is John Upton. I live at uh, Fort Julianne Lane. And I'm here uh, as uh, one of the two uh, coaches of the Nordic ski team at the high school. Uh, my wife and I have been doing that uh, as a volunteer effort for the last seven years. Um, I wanted to thank the commission for their activities and uh, pulling together a plan of this kind. They've obviously put a lot of effort in it. And I wanted to speak specifically in support of the development of the Gullcrest property. I've walked that property uh, uh, recently with uh, uh, Ogden Williams and others who are interested, and I think it does have some significant potential. Uh, one of the greatest hurdles that we as coaches face here in Cape Elizabeth is, is traveling. We have to travel. Uh, at least three times a week to find suitable terrain for skiing and having a facility like Gulf Crest developed would uh, immeasurably improve our program. We have um, at this point somewhere between oh, 60 and 75 kids uh, from the middle school up to the high school competing in Nordic skiing in the winter. Uh, Marianne Dawes, who was here, uh, had to leave, who was the uh, uh, running coach for the high school. I'm sure I could speak to similar numbers uh, uh, in the fall. I'm sure this trail, if it were a uh, trail system, if it were developed on the Gullcrest property, would be used uh, by thousands of people uh, on an annual basis. Uh, that's the, the best example I can give of the type of use that you would see is, is what's going on up at, uh, at Twinbrook in, in the town of Cumberland, which took a similar piece of property, developed it as a multi-use trail system, and it has become a, a mecca uh, for many communities, and, and including Cape Elizabeth, which uses it extensively. Uh, we traveled our, our skiers up to, uh, to Twinbrook all last winter. Uh, there was a, a cross-country running the race there on Wednesday, and there, there must have been 500 uh, uh, runners, high school runners from throughout the greater Portland area using that facility. Um, it's the kind of, of facility that I think, uh, with, a, with a public land, uh, the last two speakers have raised important issues about uh, private property. Uh, this is a property that, that the town owns, and I think it can be developed sensitively, and I'd urge you to, to go ahead with it. I have some specific comments about the proposal that I guess is the next uh, uh, action item, and I'll, if I could, speak sure. at that time to those uh, uh, 
more specific observations. Thanks, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Anyone else? Last call. <laughs> okay. Hearing no more speakers, I declare the public hearing closed. Mm. Thank you very much to everyone who spoke. Okay, I guess we move on to item number 35, which is action on the proposed Greenbelt plan. Anyone have any action to propose? Oh. I guess I would propose that we adopt the plan as a plan. I'm very sympathetic to the private property owner's concerns and um, would never support the development of trails on private property where the private property owners are objecting. Um, keeping that in mind, I think the document we have is a plan. It's a good one. Um, has a lot of good stuff in it. And um, I would suggest that we adopt it as a plan. And then as we move forward, in our budget from year to year. We also have another item further down the agenda. Um, but as we move forward in the next five, ten years, we have a wonderful document that um, we're on record as supporting as a plan where we want to go by and large. And I don't know that we need to amend it um, for the private property uh, owners because I think the plan and the Conservation Commission does make clear that it is no one's intent to ever acquire anything through eminent domain. I would personally oppose that um, were I to remain on the Council. So um, that's what I'd like to see happen tonight. Second. And moved and seconded. Do, I have, dis do we have discussion? I had a clarification. Yeah. Did that include the vision and goals statement portion? Yes, that yes, yes. That's, I think, really what we are adopting. But not all the specific priorities towards the end. Are, are you talking about adopting the whole document? Let's make sure we know what we're voting on here. I'm certainly talking about adopting the vision and goals statement. I don't want to see us throw out the rest of the document. I think it implements, in large part, the vision of, and goals. And we need to keep that in mind and be mindful of it, whether we need to adopt the whole document. I guess just, I'm not clear on what, whether we need to do that. But Just for clarification, that includes pages 3, 4, and 5 that everyone in the audience has. In addition, pages 6 and 7, which are not part of what's proposed to be adopted, which are in the plan itself, then go into some of the priorities. So you'd stop short of just saying that this, this project, the project shall be done one, two, three, four, five. You stop just short of that if you look at pages three, four, and five, which is the vision and goal statement. Which I think is what you're and I, I would like to stop short of mandating a specific order with the priorities, but uh, I certainly will be mindful of that as we go through our budget process in coming years and what we can do. So I'm so seconding are you amending items one through five. Is that what I'm you, seconding? Are you amending your motion to be basically pages three, four, and five, yes, which are vision you. and goal <laughs> statements? And do we have a second for the amended motion? Yes. Thank you. Discussion? Comments? Questions? On the Councillor McGinty. Um, like Councillor Lynch, um, I too am always concerned about private property rights. Um, the reason, and I don't think Mr. Chase alluded to it or stated, the reason the St. Bartholomew's um, uh, trail is an issue is because the easement on that expires in three years, four years. It was originally five years. So there's a deadline on that. If we want to act on that, we have to make some decision on that within that five-year period. I think there's three or four more years left, so three years left on that. That's why that's such, a, such an issue. Um, I'm sure with the uh, commission with this report uh, because of that. Um, 
And, and, and is that trail, just for people to understand, is that tra proposed trail on publicly owned land or an easement? Where, where is it? Is it on it's, private it's, property? It's not on private property. It's on, it's an easement. It's a pri uh, Mr. McGovern. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the Roman Catholic Bishop of Portland who owns the St. Bartholomew's Church property granted an easement to the town over the property uh, as part of the site plan approval process for the improvements that were made to St. Bartholomew's Church approximately two years ago. But the easement expires in three more years, approximately? Sort of. It's, there's, a, there's some fudgy language in there <laughs> that, that simply says that it would be relocated to another position if that position didn't take. It involves a wetland and a bridge, and it's a little more complicated than just saying it expires. But the property owner uh, of where that trail is is in agreement with the Roman Catholic Bishop yes. of Portland signed a document, yes. Okay, fine. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify. I, I hate to speak for the church. I, that's not something I'm a house We'll allow it. Councilor Fritz. It seems to me that this section entitled, uh, the next section after, um, after uh, five. Page, the top of page seven, um, possible Greenbelt Trail expansions is an important concept. There are a lot of concepts in there that seem to me should be included, not, you know, and then stopping with the priority list. So I think that's good, back, you know, that can be background, but that contains the statement that no trail be constructed on privately owned property without written permission, and, and there's just some concepts in there that I think. So you'd like to see uh, an amended amended yeah. motion um, that would include pages three, four, I'm sorry, three, I don't have those three, four, five, and the top of seven. And the top half of seven. Right. That, that is part of the Greenbelt plan, but is not in the handout that the public has. So if the council is contemplating that, I would think someone might want to read it aloud. Do you want to read that aloud, Councilor Fritz? Okay. Um, it's so at the top of that page. Uh, possible Greenbelt Trail expansions. Below is a description, and maybe we'd have to take that out, but a, a description of the Greenbelt Trail link shown on an accompanying map. Proposed trail locations are influenced by the following assumptions. Link existing public access lands. Link all neighborhoods to nearby public access lands. Use land that is undeveloped due to wetlands and construct boardwalks. Use land that is currently provides casual public access. Use paper streets where the town has residual rights. In many cases, proposed trails have been shown on privately owned property. No trail will be constructed by the town on privately owned property without the writ express written permission of the property owner. All affected property owners have been notified of this process. The Conservation Commission would like to initiate discussions with private property owners to explore opportunities for Greenbelt trails that meet the needs of both the town and property owners. The location of proposed trails in most cases is conceptual only. If the trail is developed, a field assessment will be needed to site the trail. In citing the trail, factors such as avoiding the removal of trees and minimizing wetland locations would be considered. It is the Conservation Commission expectation that Greenbelt trails will be used primarily by nearby neighborhood residents. The Conservation Commission is attempting to make a proposal where all neighborhoods will be near a Greenbelt trail because Greenbelt trail opportunities will be nearby. Parking lots are not proposed for any but the trails on large town parcels. I mean, it does seem that there are a few sentences in there that refer specifically to the following list, but I think those could be extracted to make it make sense. But I think there are some principles in there, um, like avoiding the removal of trees and just some and the, the wetlands issues that are good concepts that should be part of the plan. Okay. Need to ask the, mo the motioner. I would accept yes. that as a friendly amendment. 
<laughs> and do we have a friendly second for the amended amendment? We do. Okay. Councillor Roberts. Yeah, I have concerns in, in adding that because when you say no removal of trees, then it gets into technical stuff that really doesn't belong in a goal and vision statement. Uh, obviously, we have zero rights to build on private property anyway. We can't go in and do it even if, even if it's the best trail in town unless the landowner wants us to do it. We don't need that. That gets into the detail. I would prefer not to have it as part of a goal and vision statement. It's I'd share that. Councillor I, I, I understand what Councillor Roberts is saying here. We're, this, is not, this, is a, this is not a concrete document that we're talking about here. We're talking about what we'd like to have. I don't see that paragraph as being uh, at all costs. And it, it says here that we might avoid the removal of trees. Well, we're going to avoid that if we don't need to remove a tree. It's not saying you must avoid all removal of trees. Or it's not saying we will take them all out. It's that I don't think it states that that, that blatantly. Um, I think that there are two or three things that would be worth putting in the amendment for the plan, and I, I just don't see any problem. There's nothing, nothing bound in concrete in this paragraph that you just read. So you support the three and a half page, the, the I support the, the amendment. I support yes. the the motion is made plus the addition of these three paragraphs. Okay. Any other comments? Councillor Barry? Uh, just on uh, page three, uh, the uh, goals, I'd like to point out that the, uh, the, the goals uh, state in 1.2 paragraph, it says the town will be sensitive to the concerns of abutters as the green belt plan is implemented. And I think two or three councils have expressed that concern. I share that because I think private property uh, is uh, affected not only by going across the property itself, but by uh, what happens right next to private property. And I think the abutters should be uh, concerned. If you run a choo-choo train right down through uh, uh, next to my driveway, uh, it's going to affect my property. Uh, I think the abutters, the concerns of the abutters should be uh, strenuously uh, considered here before any trail for the public is uh, put through that will affect adversely the uh, of, uh, the owners of the private property. Uh, it says opposition to any kind of trail should not result in abandoning the trail. Uh, I think it very might, very well might uh, happen that uh, certain opposition to a particular trail might well result in abandoning the trail. I just raise that as a point because I think that we should not uh, be on a runaway train here as far as uh, affecting private property rights. There are a lot of private property rights that are affected by various trails here that are shown on the map, as uh, we've shown it to the people. Uh, that being said, I think that the Conservation Commission has done a lot of uh, wonderful work in putting this together. I've heard the remarks about the, uh, the Gulf Crest property, and, and that's a uh, uh, solid uh, um, march into the future, I think, for the, uh, the people uh, who are going to be using that property, and it is town-owned property, so for skiers, in that season, and runners in the other season, that will be fine. But I think we must remain sensitive to concerns of the abutters of uh, the trails who own private property. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilor Roberts. Yes, obviously the green belt and the trails are dear to my heart. I've worked on trails in Stonegate, and Broad Cove, uh, at the uh, Great Pond, uh, Gull Crest, you name it. If there's been work done it, I've probably been there. My concern is that uh, I would prefer to see the town, as we develop this, uh, move forward and develop something in each of the parcels so that there's not an undue burden put on any one particular neighborhood um, so people don't have to be doing a great deal of traveling. The other issues can be taken care of later as far as loops and things like that. Most of those have a large price ticket on them anyway, and I'm not sure that they're going to happen as quickly as people would like. Um, most of the trails that are in town right now have been done with volunteer help and have been relatively inexpensive. Um, some of the stuff that was proposed tonight is going to cost a lot of money, so if they're really interested in it, then they need to think about how they're going to fund doing stuff like that. But um, I definitely am supportive of the, uh, of the uh, Vision and goal statement, I will support the original uh, motion. I'm not going to support the amendment for the reasons I stated earlier. Other comments? Councillor Fritz. 
Well, just um, I also have been a very strong advocate of um, preservation of open space and trails for um, recreation, and I'm I'm very impressed with what has happened so far in this town. It's I think we've just really had some wonderful cooperation between I mean planning board working with developers and obtaining land that way the town has put in money the land trust has been fantastic and uh, now we've had a big contribution from the state and um, I think it's all just been really really um, successful but I think that this plan takes things further and gets more detail out of out of what we already have and connecting up those parcels. I think it's been very well thought of, thought out by the Conservation Commission. And um, I, I very much like the idea of the neighborhood concept. I, I just know how much I value the very close paths that I'm able to walk and, and, and get there without driving my car. Um, uh, so I think that's really, really important for our quality of life in the town. Um, I want to thank Maureen O'Mara for all the work she's done working with the, the GPS and mapping and, and everything that's happened. Um, and I, I'm glad that the plan talks about the maintenance of the trails and, and much better signage. That's something that I think all of this has to work on so that we so people know and are comfortable where to go and also stay off of private property. Um, I think the boardwalks are very important and I really like the idea of going to the demolition pile to get um, some, some materials. Um, and, and I think that the Conservation Commission made a really good effort at laying out the tasks, you know, what their role is, what the public works role is, including some volunteers, um, working with volunteers for trail maintenance. So I think, it's, I think it's just a very good plan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I have, uh, echo everyone's praise of the plan. I think it's uh, an, ex an excellent job. A lot of work and effort um, went into this. Um, there are specific issues uh, that will be hard issues having to do with the Green Belt, issues of cost, private property rights, privacy, parking, and publicity, and which is related to how much usage there will be. Um, I think that what we, are, what we are voting on here this evening is uh, the, sort of the broad concepts the goals, the vision statement, the overall plan, the specific priorities we're not addressing yet and will be addressed, I think, when the rubber hits the road, as Councillor Roberts says, by future votes on specifics through the budget process and um, as priorities come up and as the Conservation Commission brings things before us. But I, ex I uh, support this plan. I support the motion as made, the amended, amended motion as made. And uh, I'd like to move the question. All those in favor? Could we have the question read. Please? Pardon me. Have the motion read, please. Can we have the motion read, please? It would be that you approve the adoption of the Greenbelt Plan 2001 Vision Goal Statement, as in pages three through five, including the top of page seven. And obviously, that would be better worded in the motion, but it's yes. pages three can, through five. Can we vote on the amendment first? Seven. Shouldn't we well, vote? Well, Marianne was the original mover in Penny the second, and that was all combined into the one. It wasn't a formal amendment. They, they amended their motions they amended the and them. their second. So we, we have an, 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 an amended motion before us. So I would like to move the question. All those in favor of the, uh, of the motion? Seven. Obviously, it is unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, if I can find my agenda here. Amendments should be separate, so you can vote on them. I'm sure you just play with a certain part of it. Well, it was moved. 
and next time, Jack. it was amended. Next, you'll have your chance next time, Jack, if you want to make a countermeasure. <laughs> um, right. Item number 36, an action on proposal to develop a master trail to the Gull Crest property. And uh, Manager McGovern, would you please this? elucidate? This is on your agenda for a couple of reasons. One, it, it, it is here as, a, as an opportunity to show your support of your earlier vote. Uh, secondly, uh, we've applied recently for some minor bridge work to occur over a small wetland area at the Gulf Crest property, and the main Department of Environmental Protection strongly advised us that we not keep coming to them with every little bridge, but they'd much prefer that we come with a with an omnibus permit. That also helps us with permitting with the planning board because we can do it a lot less expensively than going for every small proposal that it ought to be done as a, as a uniform uh, combined master plan. Uh, as prepared, this draft proposal uh, is, is purposely general as to the widths of the trails, the uses of the trails, instead thinking that that would come forward through the public process and that would know the alternatives through the process, as for example, point five provides specifications for trail and boardwalk construction for purposes of developing a town standard. Through this, we would try to develop the town standard. We're not presupposing as we begin this process what the town standard would be. Uh, it goes on for about nine different points. This was prepared uh, in discussion, particularly with the town planner, myself, with Steve Harding, our engineer. Uh, the cost of it is $12,700. The work would be completed by late spring of uh, 2002, late next spring. It's proposed that the funds come from a small amount of money remaining from the construction project for the Gulf Crest property. As you recall, when that was budgeted, it was a it was a tripartite, tri uh, there is such a word, uh, project involving the construction of the public works drive, the the protection of open space, and the development of the two ball fields that were mentioned earlier this evening. So. This would be uh, devoting a, a little bit more attention than has been to this point uh, to the uh, undeveloped portion of the property. Thank you very much. Well, Madam Chair. Oh, oh okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Another question. I'll get you next. The oh, question was I'll get you. Um, was this the result of an RFP? No. Councillor Carson. I move the. Uh, Acceptance of the proposed uh, OST Associates plan is prepared for us this evening the, uh, for the Gulf Press parcel. Second. That general scope that the manager was just talking about. Second. And I, I could elaborate a little bit more on Councilman McGinty's question. I, 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 I think I know the, the answer. They did the original master plan for that property. They did. That's okay. that's they did the master plan I, for the property, and there, all the previous work they did on the property was, was the result of an RFP but there wasn't a specific request for proposals. That's what RFP is for, the, for this particular aspect because they've been the master planner up to now and it's just felt that they know the, they know the property, they know the information and bring someone else in this time probably would not be cost efficient nor, nor efficient. No, that, makes, that makes sense. I forgot they were the master planner. But this planner. wasn't specifically as a result. I mean, this, this seemed like it included some of the things that they had done before. I raised that same issue in terms of some of the survey work, and there were most of the in-depth survey work was done immediately around the public work charge, and they indicated that there were some areas of the property that from the very beginning there was still some uncertainty, mm -hmm. and they wanted to use this opportunity to tie it down. It was not an area that we were concerned about development at all, but uh, there wasn't an area particularly down by the, the marsh and the, uh, particularly down by the marsh that uh, they wanted to be sure that we got it right. Is that what you were thinking of? Yeah, I asked that same thing when I looked at it. Yeah. Councilor Roberts. Yeah, if I might, through to the town manager, I assume that this plan will be put together by OST Associates without uh, an, a new board or commission or whatever being developed, and then they will take it to the Conservation Commission for input and the council for input. The point seven in the proposal assumes there'd be one public forum meeting under this budget, two meetings with the Conservation Commission. They would be the oversight group for this particular process. Uh, two site walks, one with town staff and one with representatives of the board's commissions, and two meetings as well with the town council. So they will put the plan together and just present it, basically? The Conservation Commission will be the, will be the overseer of this process and will, under the, the scope, would, would do the public forum and would 
uh, you know, work with them in developing a, a recommended master plan. Okay, thank you. Councillor Lynch. One question um, for the town manager and then a comment. Um, I assume this, Mike, this money is in the town budget? It's money is remaining from the Gullcrest development project that included okay. the public works garage, the ball fields, and the uh, open space. Okay. And it's actually interest. It's from interest earnings during the, uh, during the process on the investment of funds. Okay. Uh, and then secondly, um, with all due respect to architects and engineers, I get a little nervous about the, ex the kinds of proposals that they may come back with in terms of cost. <laughs> and so, but I've also talked, and I'm very supportive of this, but I've also talked to a lot of people, including Ogden Williams and others, who've said they would love to volunteer and work on this. So I just hope that when you're communicating with these folks that you'll be indicating to them that we're not looking for the Cadillac plan, that we're looking for something that volunteers can work with, whether it's um, Jack Roberts and Ogden next summer or others, and that they come back with a plan that is realistic from that perspective. That was a question? There's, no, no <laughs> that, was, that was a that comment. That was my comment okay. to request that if I vote in support of this, that it will be uh, not the uh, uh, gilded lily context. kind of. Won't be like the new sign that enters the Gullcrest field? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is something. I am right, very heard supportive. About that my biggest fear is they will come back with some plan that's so expensive that people will throw their hands up. And I want them to know that people are willing to work on this. They're willing to work for free. We're going to look for lumber at the dump. Let's come back with something realistic. And perhaps it could be a phased kind yeah. of plan, it's, too. It's, it's all of those things. But you know, this is designed for the Conservation Commission mm -hmm. to be providing that, that daily direction. It, it also, you know, there's, it's a huge challenge, the portion of this to get to from the high school over to the Gulf Crest property. There's several different options that are going to be looked at. You know, I can't, you know, the re one reason we're doing this is we've known all along that that was going to be very expensive. Uh, but at least now with this, we would know exactly what it would cost, and you would have three or four different alternatives. You know, I'm sure they're going to look at inexpensive ways of doing it, but I don't want to uh, have anyone under the impression that some of this might not be expensive because particularly that crossing, uh, you know, it's, it is something that if you're going to do it, it does need to be done in uh, a uh, Chevrolet-like fashion and uh, not in No Yugos? Not a Yugo. You know, it's got to be something that with the investment that's made in it, it's got to stay there and withstand the title. Influence. And I support that. I just, I figured you yeah. I just don't want a Cadillac or a I, I just, I But I, a I'm hoping that the options are all laid out separately so that we can prioritize them. The council can I, I think prioritize. the Conservation Commission yeah. is, is hearing. They're all smiling right. and yeah. perhaps grimacing. So <laughs> <laughs> I think they're, they're hearing us on this one. So since they'll be the ones who would be working with with these folks, I, I think they will provide a goodly amount of direction. Any other comments? Um, is, is there, motion is, there is a motion on the floor. I'm sorry. Um, let's move the question then. All those in favor? Seven. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Our next, we may want to pause a moment. People, some people may want to leave. <laughs> These people aren't interested in tax abatement? I was giving them to what? Including council. <laughs> oh, yeah. What they don't have the years Thank you. Thank you. You'll be busy. I think we should do a show these <laughs> Right. You're making your mark on this town forever. Oh, 
Okay, if we could uh, pull our attention back to the agenda, please. Item number 37, action on proposed abatement of personal property taxes for the former sheer madness business. Deborah Lane, would you yes. like to sure. introduce this? Thank you very much. From time to time, we bring forward to the council uh, recommendations um, to abate uh, personal property taxes for businesses that have gone out. I can assure you that we, or I, have tried uh, several ways and so forth to collect these. Uh, specifically tonight, we are talking about sheer madness from the years from 1997 to 1999. It just appears that those taxes will not be paid to the town. Uh, in working with the tax assessor, um, I have some information in your packet talking about what the council's rights are under the law to abate them, and we would be talking about $57.36 for that time frame. So I would recommend that you approve the abatement. So move. moved. Moved that. Second. So, somebody moved it. I did. Okay. And it was seconded? You heard a second? Yes. Yeah. Discussion? Councilor Roberts? I had a couple of questions. Uh, this one obviously is not an, an awful lot of money, but. Why weren't the taxes collected when they were due? And if there's other situations similar to this, then we can't collect them. Do we have some option at the time to either collect or shut them down if they're not paying? The personal property tax law varies from the real estate in terms of you can't go in and put a lien on as you would in real estate. And I'm oftentimes told by our town attorneys it's very involved, and I think it's actually you go to court in like a civil matter or something. So it's. It's different, and yes, I believe you can go to the extreme of actually taking personal property out of businesses, which other communities have been known to do. We didn't really feel in this case that that was a situation. We have another case in town that I will be working with the town attorneys. It is a significant amount of money for a number of years. But again, the personal property laws, it's more involved. We have to get our town attorney involved. I was trying not to do that, trying other methods to collect it. It just is not working. So, so at this point, it's a matter of getting it off the book so you can just clear it off your table? That's correct. Okay. A lot of times it's financed. Some of this property is financed. They have liens already. Does the building, or does the business exist elsewhere? Or just not, not in the town that I'm aware of. They have not filed any personal property filings with the assessor, no. you know, for this year. So we believe that, that that business is no longer in the community. And that's why we're bringing this forward, because they are not. Right. Not in the community, that's but right. in some other community? I, I don't know. You can't chase them. You can't. Councilor McGinty. Um, it's a process question. It states in this uh, Title 36 section that the assessor has to oh, notify us in writing under oath and stating the reason. Has that been done? Mm -hmm. I know he's done it under oath, but <laughs> I just, I just, it's a process question for me. That's yeah, we, we'd got an earlier, I, I, did, I don't have it with me, but we'd got an earlier note from Matt. Was it an email? Mm -hmm. Deborah? Did uh, we get some? Yes, I think it was. Yeah. An email, yeah. It was an email. He was official. But he didn't do it under oath. So what I'm is just, the I'm reason? just want to follow the section, that's all. That's what it says. I, I, You're just a law-abiding yeah. citizen. Law-abiding <laughs> citizen, that's right. But his letter is saying that we should state the reason that, that we're saying that the taxes are not collectible. So I'm not sure what that reason is. Is that I mean, absence? Inability of the person assessed. It would okay, be too inability to, 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 to It would be too expensive to try to collect it. There's no pot of gold <laughs> at the end of the rainbow. That's not one of the reasons. Absence of the person assessed for pay would be the okay. one of the reasons you'd be doing. And the property also is gone. The personal property is no longer available. Okay. Are we are we done with discussion on this one? Let's move the questions. <laughs> okay, let's move it. This one down. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. beat this one to death. <laughs> All those in favor. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, next, citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. There are still a few people out there. I don't I know. I just had one. I just want to mention that we have two, at least two reporters here this evening. Uh, one from the Cape Current and one from the Forecaster Southern Edition. 
Forecaster Southern Edition. And you might have read in the Cape Prairie that we have a uh, plethora of newspapers now covering us. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Greco, Greco, and Jeff Ing uh, from the Forecasters here, and Jeff Inglis from the Cape Current. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. And we probably have other media outlets watching on cable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is hot news here. Um, so hearing nothing to be added to the agenda, um, we'll move on. I just wanted to mention for the sake of everyone who may be watching, may still be watching, the October and November town council meetings will be on, not on Mondays as they usually are, but on Wednesdays, October 10th and on Wednesday, October 10th, and Wednesday, November 14th, due to the observation of Columbus Day and Veterans Day. And secondly, there is going to be a workshop, a town council workshop, having to do with the community center project, the Pond Cove Millworks building, that will be held September 25th at 7.30 p.m. There has been a little question about the time. I've seen it a couple different times, different places. It is at 7.30 p.m. and it will be held at the new fire department building, not at the high school library as you may have noticed in another meeting notice. It will be held at the new fire department building at that new meeting room so we can get a chance to see what that new meeting room looks like. And that is open to the public. Uh, we, w we have invited the school board and the community center committee, commission? With study. study committee, thank you very much, um, to present information to us, to present their findings to us. So it'll be a, it, actually that's an interim report. They're only we're only in like the design sketch phase of that yeah. process, so it's still sort of a progress stage. report. Okay, but it is open to the public if anybody wants to come. Um, is there any other meeting that anybody needs to announce for the public? <laughs> no. Then do I hear a motion? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Almost, yeah. On Thursday of this week, yes. the town hall, the library will be closing uh, for the rest of the day for the annual employee appreciation luncheon. Uh, in, it was in the Cape Courier and they published it as Wednesday, September, Wednesday, September 13th? Mm -hmm. And it's actually Thursday, September 13th. So. You know, it's, uh, we hope that doesn't inconvenience everyone. And meanwhile, anyone has a car to re-register, they can do it online. Debbie reports we had 71 in August mm -hmm. re-registrations online. So and, uh, the business is booming. Great. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I move adjournment. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. We're done. We're wait. Wait.